everybody. Uh, my name is Tanya Aguiniga, and I am a COLA 2020 fellow. I am originally from Tijuana, Mexico, um, and I grew up crossing the border every day to go to school in the U.S. Doing that um, just made me super aware of all the inequalities between the U.S. and Mexico and the relationship between both sides and how interconnected and interdependent on one another. A lot of my work has encompassed covering border issues and issues of immigration, bringing to light a lot of um, what our border communities face through craft activations. Over the years, the border itself has morphed into different things, and I've been able to understand it as, you know, obviously like a really physical place, but it's also, you know, a psychological place where those of us that are affected by border policies um, experience it almost like in a, like as a psychic thing, like as a being that kind of exists in our mind that has a lot of control, sadly, over um, our safety and how we live our lives and how we're perceived by others. The borderlands are so vast and you know the area that the border itself encompasses is so wide. The U.S. and the Mexican um, side and how they interact with the border and how they use it, if they use it as a place of congregation or as a place of division. The different policies in the different towns, how it physically looks is constantly changing because of different U.S. administrations and how they choose to leave their mark on the border. With the majority of the projects that I do, um, I don't engage with a site unless I'm like really emotionally connected to it. When I work with the border fence itself, because it's a place that has so much pain and so much death and is this ominous like scar that we all have to live with. I have been in the last few years approaching the border wall, the border fence, as a site through engaging it with my own body. This year I did a performance where I forced my body to engage with the fence itself by breaking off pieces of the fence because where I grew up the uh, fence goes right up to the ocean and so the salt water corrodes the fence and I can just break off parts of the fence with my hand because it's all rusted and falling apart and it's something that you know nature also interacts with and something that we can weirdly like symbolically like break off with our own hands so all of that was exploring how the body itself deals with processing trauma related to the border as well as border emotion and like how it physically manifests itself so it feels pretty amazing to be given an award by the city of LA that says, yes, we see you and we support you and we want you to flourish. Receiving the fellowship and the monies attached to it has given me freedom to think about what one can do with an award. So it's been really incredible to know that I have the support of the city of LA to think outside of the box and to really push against what art is and who art is for and what art, you know, can be. Regardless of you know, the current situation and the fact that we're all separated from each other and that we can't, um, you know, view works in person. Um, there's still tons of possibilities and ways that we're all finding ways to connect. And there's still lots of things that we can do um, from our homes, especially if we have access to a computer. And so with this pandemic and us having to kind of figure out new ways of working and thinking about ways that we could engage communities at the border. So I'm hoping we can still organize a data-thon that uses people's collective efforts to gather information that we could distribute to different um, asylum shelters in Tijuana and as well as all along the, the U.S.-Mexican border that just shares resources in the community. It's been pretty amazing to be able to collaborate with other people expand my idea of what borders are, expand my idea of, you know, whose stories get to be told or whose stories um, are the ones that, that we need to pay attention to. So many of the issues that happen at the border or that come to bear at the border don't have to do with just U.S. and Mexico, but they're really a global issue that now we're having to, to face so many different, you know, political implications of, of our actions here, but how it reverberates everywhere.